Is our universe a giant black hole? Probably not. Well, that's, that's a pretty short video. I suppose I should explain myself. It's all in the headlines, okay? The news is going crazy with this story, and NBC News wanted me to come on. I wanted to give you the background scoop because they don't give me 10 minutes to talk about this. And I wanted to give you a perspective from a cosmologist about this paper, about this news story, and then how to frame it in our larger understanding of the universe. Check this out. So there's this paper with the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society by Lior Shamir, and he's a computer scientist. And you know what? I love computer scientists. I have a great history with computer science. I love you. Also, you're not astronomers. But anyway, we'll take it. If if you're a good scientist and you produce good data and good results, it's okay, okay? But I just wanted to point that out. So in this paper, he took data from the James Webb Space Telescope, specifically one section of a survey called the JADES Survey of Very High Redshift, Very Distant Galaxies. And he found that two-thirds of them are rotating in an opposite direction to the Milky Way. And you expect in a random collection of galaxies galaxies just scattered all around the universe that some are going to spin this way and some are going to spin that way. And it should be 50-50. It should not be two-thirds one way and one-thirds the other. The paper really digs into the technical details of the analysis methods and offers a laundry list of potential explanations. And it's one of those explanations that ended up in the press release because it's always the most interesting thing that ends up in the press release, which is that this is a result of our universe being inside of a black hole. Yeah, you heard me. It's like, okay, if we see a bunch of galaxies spinning one way, therefore we live in a black hole. That is quite the leap. The paper and the press release and the discussion tried to make that leap, but that's a big jump. And you know my mantra. If it's interesting, it's probably wrong. And this is a very interesting result, evidence that we live inside of a black hole. That sounds great. That's a wonderful soundbite. No wonder the news is all over this, but it's probably wrong. Not guaranteed to be wrong. I'm going to put the emphasis on the word probably here. I'm not going to say this is impossible. I'm not going to say that there's no chance whatsoever that we live in a black hole. I'm not going to say that, but... I am going to say that both the data here and the theory here are very weak. And the connection between the data and the theory is is tenuous at best. So which should we do first? Theory or data? Theory or data? Let's go with the theory side. Let's talk about how the universe might be a black hole. So first off, we don't think the universe is a black hole. Black holes are very, very different objects than uh, the universe. They do share some similarities, and it's from these similarities that you get this intriguing idea. The similarities have to do with the event horizon of the black hole and the singularity. So a black hole is this region in space-time that has a singularity at the center. It's a point of infinite density and it's surrounded by an event horizon, this invisible membrane that once you enter, you cannot leave. Our universe also has a horizon, it also has a singularity. The singularity is the Big Bang. If you run the clock backwards, our universe gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and then compresses into an infinitely tiny point. It also has a horizon. This is the boundary of what we can see because the universe is only so old. Light can only go so fast, so there's a limit to what we can see. Singularity, singularity, horizon, horizon. Here's the thing. Black hole singularities exist in space. I can point to a black hole singularity. There's one probably right there. Surrounded by an event horizon, I can go visit it and I can I can leave as long as I don't cross the event horizon. Black holes are surrounded by space. The Big Bang singularity exists in the past. It is a point in time, not a point in space, and is not surrounded by space because the entire universe is all the, the space. You can't embed the universe in something else because that's the definition of the universe. If anything, our universe more closely resembles a white hole, which is a black hole run in reverse, where instead of everything crushing down together, everything is rushing away from a singularity. And that kind of sort of looks like the expanding universe. Okay, but that that still doesn't quite work because the structure of the universe is very, very different than the structure of a white hole. It is possible to play a lot of games and try to stitch on the, the geometry of the universe inside of a, of a white hole solution. You can do it. It's a little ugly. 
ugly, but the main problem is, is that we can't form white holes. If you try to form a white hole, it just, just collapses instantly. It, it, they're incredibly unstable. So you have to go beyond general relativity and introduce a version of relativity called Einstein-Cartan theory. And what this does is prevent collapse into a singularity, and that if you form a black hole, instead of collapsing down into a singularity, it kind of slides right by because you get this extra torsion term, and then out pops a white hole, and then you say, okay, well, we're that white hole. Okay, I guess Einstein-Cartan theory is not well regarded. It doesn't provide a lot of useful tools beyond relativity. In almost all cases, it's identical. And it's not exactly clear that even if you avoid this singularity and produce a white hole, that you end up with something like the universe. It's not clear. But okay, that's the theory side. So the theory side is like not so great. It's it's not disproven. It's not very well supported by our observations. So what about the data? Whenever you see a science result that seems a little fishy, the key is to follow the analysis and to look for any steps that just don't feel right. For example, we have a lot of galaxy surveys. We've surveyed hundreds of millions of galaxies with lots and lots of telescopes. This study is just focusing on the James Webb. And even with James Webb, we've uh, studied lots and lots and lots of galaxies. This is just focusing on the Jades survey. But the Jades survey is, is very large and has multiple fields. Uh, this is not even using the full Jade's data set. It's only using one portion of it. How do you measure the rotation or spin of a galaxy? The analysis depends on looking at the pattern of the spiral arms, but that means that eliminates ellipticals, irregulars, it eliminates any small galaxies or ones that are too faint. So it's like filtering, 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 filtering to end up with only 260 galaxies. Out of the approximately, I don't know, 2 trillion galaxies in the universe and the hundreds of millions that we have directly mapped, we're looking at a sample of around 260. And this author, in previous studies, has found opposite results, has found more galaxies spinning with the Milky Way than against. And so in this new paper, doesn't address that he's finding the exact opposite conclusion as what he did before. Maybe that's a sign that there's a problem with the choice of data sets, that there's a problem with biases that are cropping up in the analysis where the claims of statistical significance are far weaker than what the author would lead us to believe. because. Every time he applies it to a different data set, he gets a completely different result. Also, many authors have studied much larger data sets using much more comprehensive analyses and found nothing. No sign of galactic biases and galactic spin. It's all even Stevens 50-50 all across the universe. It's only when we get to these very, very narrow, curated, selected data sets that this result pops up. But even if two-thirds of these galaxies really are rotating in one direction when it should only be half— it's only a very weak connection to the hypothesis that we live in a black hole. Because the statement is, okay, black holes rotate. Well, what's the connection between a rotating universe and a spinning galaxy? How do you get a galaxy to spin inside of a rotating universe without disrupting all of structure formation? There's no clear answer. And why doesn't this result agree with other galaxy surveys or even previous studies done by the same author? Why does it produce contradictory results? If we live in a rotating universe, we've checked not just galaxies, but we've looked for things like the cosmic microwave background and, and Lyman Alpha Forest, baryon acoustic oscillations, all sorts of cool, nerdy cosmological stuff. We see no evidence there. So how does that connect? What about the biases? What about the selection effects? This is honestly a, a very weak paper. Yes, it passed peer review. I have a lot to say about peer review. If I was the peer reviewer, it would have not flown through because there are significant deficits in the analysis choices to get what looks to be a preconceived result and a careful selection of tools and parameters and filters to get that result. Even then, it's only a very, very weak 
connection to the idea of a rotating universe. It's a very weak connection to go from a rotating universe till we live inside of a black hole. I award you no points. The theory isn't standing up, the data isn't standing up, and the connection between the theory and the data isn't standing up. It seems likely that we do not live inside of a black hole. We can't rule it out, but there is no compelling evidence that we do. So we keep doing cosmology. We keep having fun. This result, we don't need to worry about too much. Thank you.